Bye girls. Great seeing you. See you in California. Bye. It is a beautiful day on Cape Cod in the winter time, but I am at the bus stop getting ready to head to the airport and back to LA. Scary time to be flying, especially into LAX, considering they just announced a state of emergency for the coronavirus, so gotta be extra careful. But that's definitely something I wanna talk about. The last time I was on this bus was actually in 2017, do you remember? <laughs> right before I went to San Francisco, then back, then China, so it's been a while. Okay, bye, love you. No way. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Security. And it's always nice when you fly at an off hour, you just fly through security, there's no line. Since applying to LAX is such a scare for the coronavirus, definitely a good time to talk about it. A friend of mine, his name's Avisha, he actually spoke at the Biohack the World event a couple Thursdays ago in New York. As people start realizing that our health is more than just our pathologies. One of the smartest guys I've ever met in my entire life. He did this research, and then I'll link the article down below. It's a pretty easy read, very informative, and I highly, highly recommend it. Let's take a look which way we're going. That way. So when it comes to the coronavirus, I am definitely concerned. Even though the title is, this is why I don't worry about the coronavirus and neither should you, I'm still concerned. I'm not necessarily worried, but the numbers are pretty fascinating. And it's to no surprise that the media plays a big role in how much panic is instilled in the audience. It's still very serious and we need to be careful, we need to be cautious, as I definitely will be, especially flying to LA. But there are a few points that I think are pretty interesting. Now, Avisha goes through all the numbers and does a ton of research and explains it very well and how we should be worried about it based on our health conditions. The first reason he says not to be worried, if you're under the age of 65 and you have no other health conditions like comorbidities, then you should be fine. It's very unlikely that you're gonna die from the coronavirus. In fact, if you do get sick, then you have less than one in 1,000th of a chance of dying. The second reason is that if you happen to live in an area where you have access, immediate access to high quality healthcare, then your chances significantly decrease, unlike the data that's reported from China. When comparing the coronavirus to the flu, it's similar in the sense that the risk is evaluated on an individual basis, whether or not you're already very old or already sick. Given where I live, my odds are looking pretty good. To close out, Avisha talks about the time of the year, specifically the winter time when people tend to spend more time inside, that's when these types of viruses spread the most quickly. As the seasons change and as it gets warmer outside, since these viruses tend to thrive in the colder environment, he predicts that from the change of seasons that the coronavirus spreading will halt. Those are some other things that we should consider when we're hearing all this news. It's still early, a lot could change, and these are only early projections, so we don't know what's gonna happen. None of us can actually predict the future. Wow, you're the first person I've heard cough. Okay, so I'm gonna take you home, right? Yes, please. What happened? Oh, man. Oh, what's up? What's up? What's up Dude, right? I haven't seen you in so long. I know, man. Yo, 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 what's up? What's up? Did you get another awesome haircut? Here, what's up, bro? What's up, man? Oh, Your face yeah. looks like it's healed pretty well, actually. It's healed pretty well. Yeah. What's up, man? Good to see you. Good to meet you. Don't let go of the yeah. pull-up bars. What's up? Good to see you. Ciao, where are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. 